All right, everybody, welcome back to Salt City Counseling. Once again, my name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. It is Sunday, so this is my weekly healing narcissistic trauma video. Now, in the last, in the last video, I talked about the importance of meditation. All of, these, all of this stuff that, that um, I'm doing in this series, meditation is so integral um, you're gonna get far less uh, effectiveness out of this if you're uh, out of this process. So make sure that you build your meditation practice. I'll be happy to do videos on meditation. I have some videos on my other channel, Wisdom and Brews. Um, I haven't touched that channel in a, in a minute. I'm reformulating sort of things, kind of coming up with a different angle or a different strategy, trying to get some traction with it. But if you're new here, I do this series every Sunday on healing narcissistic trauma. As a therapist, I realize that we in general, the, the industry in general, is not very effective at treating this type of trauma. Uh, in fact, the industry in general is not very good at treating trauma in general. And so this series is intended to empower the individual to take this into their own hands, take steps in their own, uh, on their own accord, and, and walk through this process on their own to empower themselves, to find themselves in the process. Again, it's not intended to um, to replace your therapist. Oh my bad. Oh, so uh, you don't have necessarily have to fire your therapist unless you really want to. That's on you, right? But in this video, we're gonna I'm gonna continue talking about ways to help you exercises for you to engage into and carry through that is going to help you uh, create a new self. And uh, so. I, in other videos, I talked about the old self. I talked about how this old identity is attached to this trauma, the one where you feel small, the one where you feel powerless, and one where there's a lack of identity. One of the worst things I believe about narcissistic abuse and narcissistic trauma is a complete lack of identity, is that a, person, a person's identity has been destroyed as a defense mechanism or as a, as a survival mechanism. And so as a result, there's a lack of sense of self outside of this trauma, outside of this type of abuse, outside of this relationship, outside of feeling small and all of that. And so we, I'm going to continue to talk about exercises that you can do that are going to help create and bring in this new powerful self, okay? And, and it takes time. You got to build it. You got to in, engage in some practice. By the way, I get that there are some people that are still still, still, unfortunately, very much in touch or having regular contact with the person, whether they're a parent or a partner or whomever, uh, that, that kind of enacted this, uh, and that's going to make it a lot harder. I'm going to do a separate video on that. That's a completely other topic, so I hope that you will hit subscribe and share and comment and notification bell. You will see when those videos come up. So, um... Let me get a little bit of house, a little more housekeeping out of the way before I dive into this practice and this exercise. And that is that, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you really like my content, please hit the tip jar. Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Um, the more people send me gratuity, the more it will enable me to keep this content coming to you. Uh, if you have a viewer question, you can leave one in the comments section below. Please clarify your question. Or you can email me, C at saltcitycounseling.com. If you're in high conflict, custody, or divorce, go check out my courses on my shiny new website, bare bones, but shiny new website, highconflictcommunity.com. And uh, yeah, I have some courses over there, so go check them out. Okay, so let's get to this. If you're, if you're doing these series uh, and you have your notebook, I hope you've been taking some copious notes. I would love... Love, love to get some comments on what, what you have learned from maybe doing some of these exercises and some of your journaling, some of the breakthroughs and epiphanies that you've had. Please share those with other people, please. And especially because I, I know that some people watch these types of videos and it really helps them just know they're, that, that they're not the only one, that they're not the only person that struggles with this. Okay, so, so let's talk about letting go of this old identity. Uh, because again, uh, we don't want to reinforce this old identity. We don't want to like, and, and I don't remember if I've talked about this enough, but here it goes. Like 
the more that you think about a certain thing in a certain way, it's like a river carving out this can uh, river, you're right, carving out a canyon in a mountain. And the more that we reinforce it, the more we run through those narratives and those stories and those incidents and the same emotions attached to it, the deeper that canyon gets carved. The canyon will still exist even if you divert the water into something new. And that's okay. You're going to find that, that those, those situations will arise. That's okay. Um, but... Uh, so in this, but in this, I'm going to talk about like letting go of this old identity and, and, <clears throat> and in a lot of, in a lot of spiritual practices, by the way, a lot of people will talk about the importance of like making room for a new self, right? You can't bring in new stuff if your house is already full of old stuff. Uh, if your if your mind is already overthinking, if your if your brain is already super cluttered with the trauma and overthinking and the fear and the anxiety and the smallness and the powerlessness and the self doubt, it's really really difficult to let those uh, bring in the new. And so what we want to do is start uh, kind of getting rid of the old. And there are really some very practical ways to do that, but it's 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 a thing that you just have to practice over time. You have to put more and more insight on it. And meditation is really going to help your mind and your brain change. Uh, it's going to bring that awareness. It's going to help you let go. Meditation is very healing. Meditation is going to help you help you let go of things. So here, here are some pieces of advice that are going to help you make room for a new identity and letting go of the old one. I mean, it's really simple things. Um, for example, getting rid of stuff. Getting rid of um, items and objects, uh, decluttering, right? Get get rid of your old. You can go through your your closet and get rid of a lot of clothes that you've had for a long time. I I know that a lot of people, if they've had narcissistic abuse or narcissistic trauma, they're ashamed of doing this. Uh, they're ash they're ashamed to get rid of the old because that voice of the narcissist is still kind of sitting on their shoulder, so to speak, and is like. Why are you throwing that away? You don't deserve something new, right? And it's important to just be mindful that that's there. You don't have to listen to it. It's not an extension of you. It's just a mean voice that is sitting there on your shoulder um, telling you to do nasty, you know, or saying nasty things to you. You don't have to do what it says. But if you go through your closet, get rid of a lot of the old clothes and maybe go buy some new ones. Go buy some clothes that you like, but maybe you wouldn't normally buy. Maybe try new styles. Maybe try new types of clothing. Um, you may want to get a new haircut, a new hairstyle. You may want to do something different with your hair, your your physical image. Uh, you, losing weight would be an awesome thing to do for yourself so that you bring in this new self. Uh, losing weight would be awesome because a lot of us have... A lot of people that have had this narcissistic trauma, they might overeat. They might find comfort in food. Uh, they might see it as the only safe way. Uh, maybe it's, it's it was a maladaptive thing for them to somehow cope without taking on extra criticism, without getting screamed at. Right? Uh, you may want to <clears throat> you may want to move. You may want to move to a new location. Maybe even a new city, uh, a new town, a new state. Maybe even a new country. Right, you may want to uh, you may want to go through your phone, and you may want to delete pictures, and uh, just delete them, just get rid of them. I've heard of people going through their pictures, and just select all like four thousand pictures or whatever, delete it, just gone, and and I think that causes people a lot of anxiety to think of doing that, but that could be a very very powerful way of just saying like this is a radical way of cutting the old self loose. <clears throat> or working to cut the old self loose, right? Um, you may want to try on different types of music. You may want to listen to different types of music. You may want to start eating at different places. Uh, you may want to uh, uh, just, you, if you break up your old patterns, your old habits, your old routines, you're far less likely to uh, reinforce the old routines and the old um, identity, but you're far more likely to introduce a new one. Okay, so, so really think about potentially just getting rid of stuff, just offloading it. Uh, even if that voice is there and it's, you know, what are you doing? What's wrong with you, right? And 
and do it anyways. It could be very, very empowering. Okay, there's there's lots of way there are lots of things that you can do that are that are going to be empowering, but maybe dare yourself to get rid of something that you know would make them angry, right? That you know that that, that they would have been upset about, that you know they would have thrown a fit over. And and if you if they're not in your life anymore and you're reluctant to get rid of that thing because of that fear, just try to try to remember, just try to consider like, hey, that just means that they're still controlling me. And if they're out of my life, why are they still controlling me? Why am I allowing myself to be to be controlled by them? It's almost like it's almost like the machine is still or the hamster wheel is still running even though the hamster's gone. Right? <laughs> and and that's really what it looks like. So this is this is what I would love for people to do and I would love to to have you comment below and and tell me what your experience is. What types of things were you able to get rid of? do differently, be creative, uh, that helped you to usher in a new self. Uh, talk about the things you got rid of. Talk about the things that reinforce the old self and you just got rid of it and decided to do different, okay? And and let me know what you think. Let me know what your experiences was. Let me know what you noticed out of, out of the process. And so uh, that is your exercise for the week. I would love to hear how it goes. So make sure that you stay tuned, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell to continue to watch this Healing Narcissistic Trauma series. I'm going to keep it going probably indefinitely. I don't see an end in sight. It probably won't be for a long time. There's going to be a lot of repetition just so that we can keep putting this puzzle together. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, appreciate your viewership and we'll see you next time.